This is the Earth Science Classroom. Welcome back to the channel. This video is in the Atmospheric Science Playlist, and we're looking at ozone, in particular ozone concentrations, how we measure ozone, the person who discovered and was named after the unit of measurement, and we're looking at the overall concentration of this molecule, this three oxygen bonded molecule, which has a very good function or very effective function of absorbing ultraviolet radiation from the sun as part of the EM spectrum and the emittance of long wave infrared radiation as heat. Now this absorption of ultraviolet is going to protect our surface conditions from the adverse effects of high energy UV radiation which can cause damage to skin and damage to ecosystems and plant life. So the study of the ozone and the ozone layer, the highest concentration of ozone in the atmosphere based on altitude per latitude as well, is very important because we're seeing the thickness or the strength of our ozone layer in its ability to protect us from that ultraviolet radiation from the sun and a way to measure the effect of human activity on this ozone layer in order to make sure it is maintained and healthy and at the right thickness to do its job and function properly as to protect our earth from the radiation. Our atmosphere contains many gases. Most of them are going to be nitrogen, oxygen, argon, and there's trace gases which equate to less than 1% of the atmospheric gas composition, which contains ozone. Now, ozone is 0.000080%, and water vapor can vary, but this is a very small constituent of the atmosphere, but a very important one for its function. So the concentration of ozone based on atmospheric pressure and where the density of air is in the troposphere and mostly the stratosphere, this ozone is going to be spread out. But the Dobson unit is a measurement of this ozone concentration. Now, it is 2.69 times 10 to the power of 16 ozone molecules in one Dobson unit. Now, Dobson unit comes from Gordon Dobson, which is an English meteorologist. And he worked in the 1920s, 1930s on ozone as part of the atmosphere and its function. So in 1930, he made his first spectrophotometer and that would measure the thickness or the amount or concentration of ozone. Now, ozone is, is looked at in thickness. So if we take the vertical column of air and we push down all different airs to it makes a certain thickness of just that, just that one single air molecule, ozone would be measured in millimeters in tiny thickness. So the average is around 300 du. So it basically works out if you squash it down in a, in a column of air, it will be around three millimeters. So the, the air column would be five miles high, and yet of that five miles, three millimeters would be ozone. Yet it's extremely important for the Earth's survival for species and organic life on the surface. So this extremely small amount of ozone is very important for absorbing ultraviolet radiation. So for ozone concentration or ozone thickness, the measurement of Dobson units, we measure this through two different factors. One, the temperature at zero degrees Celsius, and also at the pressure, one atmospheric bar, or atmospheric pressure, which is generally the atmosphere at the surface. So this is how we measure the thickness of the ozone. So in this diagram, we're looking at the two principal layers of the atmosphere which contain ozone, the troposphere and stratosphere. Now, 90% of the ozone we're looking at and, and measuring is in the stratosphere. Above that, looking at the mesosphere. Now, below 35 kilometers, as I stated, you have about 99% of all the air molecules in the atmosphere. But above that, the air pressure becomes very, very small and air molecules get spread out, but the majority of air molecules are held below 35 kilometers to the surface. So the ozone layer is concentrated at a certain altitude. It's around 20 kilometers to 35 kilometers. Now the ozone layer denotes that there is a higher concentration of ozone molecules in this altitude in the, in the air mixed in with other gases. It's not just pure ozone. And if we measure it down to the column of air, it'll be a very thin, between three and four, or four and a half millimeters worth of ozone. So an extremely thin layer. However, when it's distributed across the 15 kilometers in the ozone layer, it has the effect of absorbing that ultraviolet radiation under certain wavelengths. So there is a larger proportion of ozone towards the surface layer, the troposphere, by the surface, which is called tropospheric ozone, which is smog, but the majority and the concern of 
a scientist is the ozone layer in the stratosphere. And again, there is a mixture of concentrations based on latitude, based on winds, based on UV radiation and sunlight. So a quick overview of the ozone layer. The ozone layer is just a higher concentration of ozone molecules absorbing ultraviolet radiation and creating a safer, more pleasant environment for the species on the planet on the surface. And the ozone layer can fluctuate based on the transportation of ozone and winds from the tropics to the poles and can fluctuate in the thickness of the ozone between 220 to 450 DU. If it drops below 220, then we consider it thin. And then around 100 DU, we consider it a hole based on just the lack of ozone compared to the average. The average is about 300 DU. So the ozone layer is going to have between 250 and 450 DU based on altitude and that higher concentration of ozone, which is going to absorb the ultraviolet radiation. But the ozone hole is not an absence of ozone, just a lower DU measurement or count. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. You can like, subscribe, you hit the like button. If you like more of this content, please check out my channel. Just as always, videos on the website.